The following program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Art Nelson Ministries. The lion is bold because of what the lion believes on the inside. The lion believes he's invincible. He believes he's unstoppable. He believes that he is the baddest thing in the jungle. Welcome to Voices of Victory, where the victory that overcomes the world is our faith in God. I'm really excited about today's show. I get to share something with you that I believe is going to be life changing. I'm going to climb into our text here and we're coming from Matthew chapter six, and I'm going to read verse 31 through 33. And it says this, therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now what did it say there at the end? It said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things, all the stuff you need, what, what shall I eat, what shall I drink, all the things that you will ever desire, have an appetite for, or a need for, or even a, 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 a desire, a want for that thing. Those things will be taken care of if you do what? Seek God's kingdom, which is really God's way of doing things, and righteousness, which is God's way of being right. Now here's something that's really important for us to know, family. God defines the definitions of the words that he uses in the Bible by the Bible. A lot of times people think things along the lines of, you know, what you heard growing up as a child or what your mama taught you or what your school taught you or what watching television taught you. And so you have a definition of words that is contrary to what God is saying. And if you have a wrong definition, you have a wrong outcome. In fact, the thing that's really big in the scripture is it says, seek God's way of doing things and righteousness, which is God's way of being right. And so what I want us to do today is I want to kind of touch on what God considers righteousness. And I want to show you one of the things that's extremely important for you to see your desired results in, in life. One of the things that's extremely important about the definition of righteousness that will see to it that you not only stay healed, you stay prospered, you stay delivered, but you and stay free, but you also stay getting your desired results because the word of God continues to perform in your life. I'm gonna start out by talking about righteousness. You know, when people think about righteousness, they think about doing good things, doing good things, doing right things, doing things that people consider good in the world, things that make people happy because you did that thing, oh, it was so nice of you, or a good thing to do. But God does not consider righteousness in the same way, in the same definition to how the world considers righteousness. In fact, God sees righteousness not as how you did stuff, like if you uh, help save the children, help feed the children, or if you put vaccines into a country and help that country to, to overcome certain things, or if you uh, uh, paid for the poor. That's not what God considers righteousness, not at all. In fact, the Bible tells us that righteousness is of faith. And it tells us, uh, speaking of Abraham, it says that Abraham believed God and God accounted it un unto him as righteousness. The word accounted means that he credited it to his account. It means that God said, if you will believe me, I will credit your belief in me as righteousness, not the fact that you uh, bought all the Girl Scout cookies, not the fact that you did all the stuff that the world would consider right, not because you stood before all those people and said, you get a car and you get a car and you get a car. None of that matters. In fact, you can do all of that stuff and it's really good stuff. People like it. It's a blessing to people. But if at the end you did not believe in Jesus, you did not receive the righteousness, which is a faith, and that comes from God. So your definition of being right will bring about wrong results. You see, family, God on purpose knew that mankind couldn't get it right. So he sent Jesus to die for our sins, to pay the penalty for our sins so that we could be made right. In fact, there's a scripture, I'm not gonna read it to you, but it's, it's 1 Corinthians, it's actually uh, 2 Corinthians, chapter five, verse 21, and it tells us that Jesus was made to be sin 
so that we could be made the righteousness of God. Who's the one who authors this kind of righteousness? God does. And then it says in him, in Christ Jesus. So basically Jesus was made to be sin. How was he made to be sin? Well, if you've been following this um, teaching that I've been doing, you'll discover that the kingdom of God or God's way of doing things is to be done by faith. Everything that pleases God is involving faith. If there's no faith, there's nothing that pleases God. But notice what happens. Because faith is involved, faith apprehends righteousness. Faith apprehends the things of the kingdom of God. So the Bible says that Jesus was made to be sin. Well, how does he made to be sin? By faith. You see, family, right now on earth, I'm going to say something that's big, so pay attention right now. Uh, there, right now on earth, every man and woman on earth that is trying to go to heaven, they try, they believe God with their faith so that they can go to heaven. But Jesus, who was the Son of God, made flesh, was the only one who decided that he would use his faith to go to hell. I'm going to say that again, because faith is how you apprehend God's word in your life. Faith is how you make manifest what God said in your life. So Jesus actually used his faith so that he could be made sin. Did Jesus actually sin? No, Jesus did not sin. Jesus was made sin by faith because his actions weren't sin, but he believed that he would pay the penalty for sin. And as a result, he died for the sin of you, of you and the sin of me. Now listen, family, his faith helped him go to hell so that our faith can help us go to heaven. Did Jesus commit any sin? No, he was made sin by faith. Did you commit anything right? No, you were made right by faith. So just like he believed God's word so that he could go and die. And in, in fact, the whole story, I, I, some of us, a lot of us are, are believers already. Uh, we know the story of how Jesus died in his death, burial and resurrection. And you remember on the cross, even he said, Father, why have you forsaken me? Now that was a statement of faith. Why is he speaking faith so that uh, to say that God forsook him so that God could forsake him? Why did God forsake him? so that he could never forsake us. Why did Jesus go to hell? So that we could go to heaven. Why did Jesus become and be made into sin? So that we could become and be made righteous after we believe in him. So I say that because if you don't have a right understanding of righteousness and you don't know that righteousness is only obtained by believing God, by believing in the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus, you'll go around trying to establish your own form of righteousness. You'll say, I'm going to help somebody who's poor. And it's good to do all this stuff. And I'm, I'm certainly encouraging you to do the right thing. That's a blessing to the people around you and to the world around you. But just know that unless God tells you to do that, that actually has no warrant uh, or, 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 or what, what, how do I say it? It's not going to bring about anything necessarily that God wants to pass in the earth. In fact, a lot of times people do stuff that's good and they get a pat on the back. And even though you got a warm spot on your back from where they patted you, you could bust hell wide open and find yourself in eternal flames because even though you did a bunch of nice stuff, you helped people and you did stuff, you didn't get right God's way. So the righteousness that the world called was righteous didn't bring about your desired results. And as a result, you ended up in hell in chains forever because you did good stuff and people patted you on the back, but none of it was God stuff. The difference between good stuff and God stuff is if, it's, if God didn't tell you to do it, it's not really good. So because God defines righteousness by faith, and it tells us that righteousness, which is a faith, speaks and that we get made right and get our sins removed from us by um, believing God, uh, that means that God would be the, the, the person to give us the definition of what righteousness does and how righteousness behaves. In fact, the scripture, and um, I talked about it a little bit in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, uh, I think really 20 and 21, and it tells us that God is not imputing sin. He's not imputing sin unto us. He's not, he's not keeping a record of our sins. Now, why? Is it because you did a bunch of good stuff? No, it's because you believed in Jesus. And as a result, now God is no longer keeping a record of any of your sins ever. In fact, actually, God never keeps a record of anybody's sins on earth. I'm <laughs> saying, I know that sounds like a strange thing, but listen to me, God has never ever kept records of wrongs of anybody on earth. The, the, 
The thing that holds sins in is in the heart of men, there is a record of sin. But that's only when the heart of men is not made new. It says in that same scripture there in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, it says, if any man be in Christ, he's a, 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 a new creature. Old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. The word new creature means that he is a new spirit being. In fact, he is a spirit being that is attached to the spirit of God. So. If you haven't received Jesus, you haven't become a new spirit being and your heart is condemning you because it's keeping a record of all of your wrongs. Now, the reason I can say that God doesn't keep a record of wrongs is because it tells us in 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, actually, that God is love. And then it tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that love keeps no record of wrongs. So that tells us that God, who is love, doesn't keep a record of wrongs. That means that God who is love never kept a record of wrongs. That means that God who is love is not accumulating wrongs or sins in some big file folder. No, he does not keep a record of wrongs. So your heart condemns you if you have not yet believed in Jesus and received the righteousness that comes by faith and the righteousness that comes by faith in Jesus well, your own heart is condemning you. And as a result, you'll find that you bust hell wide open because you refuse to receive God's way of being made right. Remember, we're supposed to seek, which means to pursue the kingdom of God and righteousness. Pursue God's way of doing things and God's way of being right. Now, now that we understand that our righteousness comes from believing in Jesus, I kind of want to hit on the topic of today and I want to hit on it in a hard way because I'm not only showing you that righteousness comes by faith and we believe in Jesus and now we're righteous, but I wanted you to see one of the specific definitions of what God, who defines what righteousness is, calls righteous behavior. Now, go ahead and open your Bible with me. We're going to read a quick scripture found in Proverbs and I'm going to show you this because if God is the author of righteousness and God gave, made a way for us to have access to righteousness, that means the same God who did made the way and made righteousness is going to show us how righteousness behaves. And it says right there in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1, it says this. It says, the wicked flee when no man pursues him but the righteous are as bold as a lion. I'm gonna read that again. I'm actually reading the King James. It says, the wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Now, the reason I wanted you to see that family is because on today's message, not only did I want you to see how to be right God's way and, and to get an understanding of the definition of right being right God's way, but I want you to see that God says that the righteous are bold as a lion. So anytime a person is acted, actively participating in their righteousness that they receive by receiving Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they find that they are bold as a lion. Now, boldness, the opposite of boldness is timidity. Boldness says I'm going to blatantly, aggressively, and outright uh, declare, speak, and, and show you what I believe. Timidity says, I'm going to uh, quietly, uh, because of fear, move away and, 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 and freeze up from doing what I, what I want to do or what I think to do. So timidity is the opposite of boldness. In fact, that scripture there starts out and it says that the wicked man flees when no man pursues. That reminds me of something that happened a long time ago. I used to be a gang leader and a drug dealer and I was a mess before I got saved and received the grace of God. And I, I remember one time I was driving through the city, that's the central district in Seattle, and I'm coming down the street and the police see me and I knew the police officer because, you know, being involved with gangs and all that, there's certain gang police. And, and so the police officer drives about a block or two down from me and then he bucks a you turn when he bucked the u-turn on the inside remember i was the wicked and so i was fleeing with no man pursued i thought that he was coming to get me now i had guns and drugs and all that in the car so i immediately went, went full speed i'm going about 80 miles an hour down 23rd and skirt i turned over by garfield high school and skirt i turned down the other street and boom i'm turning I'm, I'm i'm going full speed as fast as i can and skirting and everything and i ended up about two blocks behind that street that i was on I ended up totaling the car that I was driving. I'm talking about I hit a fence pole and totaled the car. The car was a mess. I had one of my friends in the, in the front seat and he almost broke his nose. And we jumped out of the car, I grabbed the gun and the drugs and we both took off running. 
Now, when I got down the street, I saw that the police had bucked a U-turn because of something that happened up the, up the street. So what was going on? Well, I was wicked, so I was fleeing even though no man pursued me. I was running even though nothing was happening. I used to think that the police were listening to every phone call even though they weren't thinking about me. Why? Because the wicked man flees when no man when nobody pursues him, just like the righteous are as bold as a lion. Both of them are a result of an internal belief that creates an external behavior. My internal belief that the police was coming to get me made me wreck the car, total the car out, run full speed, I almost break the homie's nose. What was going on? That scripture right there is accurate if you sit on either side of what is said. But here's the thing I wanted you to see, family. The righteous are as bold as a lion, the righteous are bold. The righteous ain't scared to say what, what God says. The righteous ain't scared to act on what God's word says, regardless of how it feels. So let me show you the other side of that coin, the bold as a lion portion. Actually, let me go ahead and show you a couple of scriptures with Jesus. Jesus was bold as a lion and there's two key principles I want you to learn that pertains to your boldness. Jesus acting in boldness, behaving in boldness, he spoke two things in front of people and he spoke to people about things. I'm gonna say that again, boldness will speak two things in front of people and it will speak to people about things. Now, I'm, I'm kind of gonna explain a couple of quick stories. One is found, of course, Mark chapter 11, after Jesus spoke to the fig tree, the disciples saw that it was dried up from the roots. But what did Jesus do? He spoke directly to a tree and he said, no man eat fruit from you hereafter forever. He cursed the tree and then the disciples saw the next day that it dried up from the roots. And he spoke in boldness in front of people to an inanimate object. I'm gonna say that again. He spoke in in boldness directly to a thing and he told the thing what to do in front of the people now you say well I know that Jesus did that and he's the righteousness of God so tell me how a person that's wicked would do that well have you ever been around somebody and they say man this car is junk it's garbage it keeps breaking down what are they doing they're speaking about the thing in front of people so they're wickedly of course speaking with boldness they're what they believe and fear actually about their car. They say this thing is garbage and it always breaks down. And what's gonna happen? It's gonna continue to break down and it's gonna be garbage soon because they spoke it in boldness to the thing. So the two principles, I'm gonna say it again. Boldness speaks to things in front of people and boldness speaks to people about things. It's another story about Jesus and Jesus is talking to the disciples and it's found in John chapter six, starts at verse 53 through verse 58. And Jesus says to the, to the people, the disciples and all the people listening, he says, if you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood, you don't have any part of me, basically. And he said, for those who eat my flesh and drink my blood, they have life and I'm gonna raise them up in the last day. And they, those who drink my, my blood, uh, and, and, and eat my flesh. He said, those are the ones who are gonna abide in me and I'm gonna abide in them. And he goes on to say uh, 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 that they're gonna have basically eternal life and that he's gonna live through them. But here's what I wanted you to see, family. At, in verse 66 of that same chapter there found in John chapter six, it says that a lot of people left him. Why did they leave him? Well, Jesus was talking to people about things that they didn't understand. Did he stop for a minute and say, hey, hey, hold on, you guys, let me explain to you. When I say drink my blood and eat my flesh, I mean, you're just going to eat a cracker and drink some juice and you're going to declare that it's my blood. Did he say that? Did he say, hold on, guys, don't leave. I don't want you to leave. I'm just explaining to you that symbolically you're going to do that. No, he did not do that. He boldly spoke what he spoke and he let them leave. He boldly declared what he had to share and he let them respond accordingly as to what they believed on the inside about what he said. You see, bold people speak to people about things that they may understand or they may not understand and bold people speak directly to things in front of people. So, a person who's bold may speak and declare, I'll never get that plague. It'll never come near my house. It'll never touch my family. In fact, I, I spoke that way back in February of 2020, I said that. And did it happen? Exactly what I said happened. It didn't touch my wife, my children, myself. In fact, my son was in an, he lived, he, uh, he had roommates at his house 
and and they got it and he didn't get it and he tested like four different times and it didn't touch him why because he's special i'm special because uh, uh, uh we're some kind of super powerful no because the word of god in the name of jesus always work when somebody is bold enough to work it when somebody is bold enough to say it in front of people regardless of what the people think when somebody is bold enough to say it to speak directly to the thing regardless of the fact that there's people there that are looking at them talking to a thing i'm telling you family if you have a sneeze and you speak and declare sneeze go in Jesus' name i believe i receive that i'm healed jesus took my infirmities bore my sicknesses by stripes i'm healed or whatever you may decide to say in the moment or you say i'm healed in Jesus' name if you say that in front of people now two things are going to happen for one they might think this person is a little bit eh, wacky strange maybe a little bit off key or something or they might think okay i don't know what's going on with them but what's also going to happen is god is going to be smiling on the inside when Abraham was taking Isaac up to Mount Moriah and he stopped at the bottom of the mountain with his servants and he said, I and the lad go to worship and then we'll come back soon. When he spoke that, that was a bold statement. He was saying, I'm going up here to worship with the lad. Now, let's say God hadn't have, uh, 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 if you don't know the story, basically God told Abraham to take his son up to the mountain to sacrifice him. But let's say that God had not raised uh, or, or, or not um, uh, stopped Abraham from killing his son. If God hadn't stopped him and he actually had killed him, he'd have came back down and those servants would have been like, where's your son at? But because he made that bold statement, it made God smile and of course he didn't have to kill his son. He just basically uh, was led by God to do something so that God could as a result send his son to die for Abraham because Abraham was willing to give his son to die for God. So God was able to give his son to die for you and me so that we could be made righteous. But listen, family, boldness speaks regardless of how people feel. Boldness talks to things in front of people regardless of what people think. Abraham made that statement. There's a story about Joseph. Joseph spoke and said to his brothers and his parents, you guys are gonna bow down to me. I had a dream last night, and according to my dream, you guys are gonna all become my servants. Mom, dad, brothers, all you guys are gonna be my servants. Now that's a bold statement to a little, I mean, for a little guy who's the youngest of a whole bunch of brothers and, and talking basically uh, something that they would not understand or would not take lightly but he spoke boldly because he believed something in his heart. You see, boldness is always attached to a belief in the heart, just like the wicked man fleeing when no man pursues, that timidity, that scaredness, that fear is attached to a belief in their heart. So if there is a belief that you are righteous, if there's a belief that God's word said it is so, then there will come as a result of a genuine belief, a boldness that says, you know what? I believe God, regardless of what the scenario is, I'm going to talk directly to that thing. I'm going to speak to this thing. I don't care if there's people around. I need to speak now. The doctor gives you a diagnosis and says, I'm sorry, but you have four months to live. And you say, thank you, doctor, for that diagnosis. I appreciate that you used your devices to come up with that diagnosis. Now I'm going to tell you that I am not going to die within four months. In fact, I'm going to live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. And I'm going to live a long life. And as I grow older, I'll continue to come and visit you. And I thank you for you concluding on the matter with your instruments. But I've got an instrument called the word of God. And the Bible tells me that every name must bow to the name of Jesus. So I declare uh, cancer or whatever that diagnosis is to be to be cursed, dry up and disappear from my body in Jesus's name. And I receive my healing now and I declare it right here in front of everybody who, without any regard to how they feel as a result to what I said. You see, family, boldness makes God smile. Boldness is proof of faith. If you're timid and cowardly and you're just like, um, I sure hope that happens. Now, now if you're, you're new in your faith, of course, if you just got saved, you just received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to know, family, that your boldness will develop as you learn your new identity. So don't worry if you still struggle with timidity because it takes time to mature into who you already were the moment that you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and you became a new creature. But if you've been a, a saint for a long time, and there's a whole lot of people that have been Christians for a long time, and I know that sometimes folks be faking the funk and they, it's not really real. They don't really know God and they don't understand his word and they don't get to the place where there's boldness because they really never had a heart conversion. Uh, but if you're a person that had a real heart conversion, boldness will come as a result of what you read. 
you begin to say, you know what? God says that I owe no man nothing but love. So I don't care that I have an 803 credit score. I'm not going to get no debt. I don't care that there's so many opportunities. I'm not going to get a loan. I don't care about any of that stuff because God said to owe no man nothing but love. And he said to give it to be given to me. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over. Would men give unto my bosom so I can go sow a seed and reap the harvest and pay cash and not have to deal with debt like the remainder of the world. Why? Why am I bold to do that? Because I, it, my boldness stemmed from the word of God that I heard and believed. And listen to me, family, boldness makes God smile. Boldness looks in the face of a giant that's bigger than you or twice as big as you right in the front of people and says, this day will I cut your head off. And this day will you and all of the Philistines around you uh, 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 be, uh, be food for the birds of the air. Boldness says, God told me that you mom and dad and brothers are gonna bow down to me. Boldness says to a fig leaf right in front of people watching, no man eat fruit from you hereafter forever. Boldness, I'm telling you family, comes as a result of a belief. And if you think about the lion, the lion is bold because of what the lion believes on the inside. The lion believes he's invincible. He believes he's unstoppable. He believes that he is the baddest thing in the jungle. He believes he's the king of the jungle. Now, is he the biggest? No, the elephant's bigger. Is he the fastest? No, the cheetah's fastest. Faster. If he, is he the, the strongest? Uh, there's all sorts of animals that are stronger. Rhinos, stuff like that, that are much stronger than him. But because he believes he's the strongest, he's the boldest. And as the people of God, once you've received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you haven't done that yet, grab a hold to the salvation that comes from God so that you can never have to worry about sin taking you to hell. If you've after, And after you receive that, know that boldness will grow in you because you'll become more and more bold as you believe more and more what God says about you from his word. Then I want to encourage you in this. Boldness speaks to things in front of people and boldness speaks to people about things. I want to encourage you family to be willing to talk to things forever. Everything. Talk to stuff. If you have a discomfort in your stomach, you say discomfort from my stomach, go in Jesus' name. I don't care who's around. Say it just like that. Be bold. And here's what I want you to know. You may speak to things and not see the responding results immediately, but keep speaking to things. Many people are searching for God's purpose for their lives. Artist Freeman Nelson is a pastor and author who helps inspire positive transformations. His new book, Morphed, describes how each of us can be changed from a person burdened with regret to someone who is free to develop a close personal relationship with God. Available at Amazon, your local bookstore, or call 1-800-473-5106. That's 800-473-5106. If you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, can I have the honor of leading you in the prayer of salvation? Did you know that God loved you so much and wanted a relationship with you so much that he sent his son Jesus to come to the earth to die for your sins so that he could raise Jesus from the dead and you too could die to sins and then be raised from the dead brand new. If you'll pray this simple prayer right after me, today you can begin again and this will be your new birth birthday. Just say this simple prayer, say this, say, Father God, in Jesus' name, today, Lord, I receive you as my Lord. I receive you as my Savior. I give you my sin and I receive your righteousness. And I now declare that I'm in a right relationship with God. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God, you just made a great decision. And welcome to eternity with me. In fact, we'll both be in heaven together experiencing the goodness of God forever, friend. And I want you to know that you no longer have to walk around condemned, guilty, full of shame, and feeling bad about the things you did because Jesus himself died so that you could be forgiven.